There are four major factors when it comes to what can go wrong with your coolant. This is why I have my buddy John with me to help educate all of us on how we can learn and remedy these things. Now, in this one, we're going to talk a bit about foaming, and not when I get really hungry and desire some food, <laughs> and not from Old Yeller, which made us all sad, but the coolant that we're looking at and how we can fix those issues a lot of times from high pressure situations, right? But let's talk about foaming. High pressure systems is most commonly thought of as causing the foam, but there's a few other things that I want to bring up first. One is not every coolant is designed to work with a high pressure system. It's not that the coolant is bad or anything like that, it just wasn't designed to work with a high pressure system, especially older coolants. We've got a couple of coolant samples here, and this one is a bit of an older technology wasn't designed for high pressure systems, probably back in a day when coolant was probably, I don't know, 200, 250 PSI max. So if we just take this coolant, shake it up, it has a lot of foam and it just stays. This is one of our newest products, the Microsoft 692 XT. It's designed for high pressure systems. We can shake this, we can even shake it even more than the other one and it'll build up just a little bit of foam, but it starts going away almost instantly. The 692, all the foam is already gone, and the old technology is still foamy. I think it's actually getting worse. <laughs> it, it actually can as all the air starts slowly working itself out of the fluid. That's going to stay that way probably for, I don't know, seven to ten minutes. And you can think if you're constantly running your high pressure, that foam just keeps building and building until it comes out of the machine. That product isn't bad, it's just not designed for that new application. Yeah, I definitely don't want to turn my machine into a bubble bath. I've but been around too many. <laughs> even with the right coolant, John, you've mentioned that even with the right coolant, there can be some issues, so we need to pay attention to our filtration units, right? We need to pay attention to some of the other aspects of the machine. Would you like to go over some of that as well? Yeah, I'm going to start off with the easiest one first. First and foremost, maintain the proper concentration. Sounds like a broken record. Maintain your concentration, maintain your concentration. But it is the simplest thing to make your coolant work at its optimum performance. And if you have coolant that's supposed to be run at, say, 8 to 10% concentration, but you're running at 20, 25%, all that extra chemical gives it all that extra chance of foaming even more. So maintain the proper concentration. You reduce it, the chance of, of foaming. You brought up filtration. Coolants have a maximum filtration that you can run. A lot of coolant that has oil in it, typically 10 micron is the lowest filtration that you want. And that's pretty easy to come by, it's a pretty common filter. But what happens is we have those high pressure systems and people don't change the filters often enough and that 10 micron filter starts becoming like a two or even a one micron and it starts creating issues for the coolant. And that is another big, big issue. And John, you've kind of spoken to me, and I'd like to try to convey this to the best of my ability to the folks watching right now, that the coolant itself broken down into tiny, tiny little components. If the filtration units are big enough, you said 10 micron or bigger, the components can get through even on the wide space, right? So if it's flipped, uh, in a smooth cir circular way it can go through easily through this filtration unit but wide it can even get through however when the chips start to build up now it's instantly reducing the overall micron filtration unit so even turn the right way it'll start to build up so even like at this point all of it starts to accumulate and turn into foam even with the right coolant in there which is why this filtration is so important to maintain and pay attention to and behind us I believe we have one where we're always talking about keeping those spindles running, right? So you have a switch to go from one filtration unit to another to make sure if one needs, get, one needs to get cleaned, the machine doesn't need to be stopped. You can just switch to another unit, let it keep running, and then change that filtration unit out. Is all of this correct? Am I explaining that at all, oh, right? Th that's perfect. I could have done better. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Uptime is everything. And most all of these high pressure systems have two filters in them so that you can switch on the fly. And the way that you know if you need to switch, most of them have an inlet pressure. And on the side of the machine is going to be some instructions, for instance, the one behind us. It's supposed to be about 14 PSI. When it hits about 20, 
it's way too high of pressure, meaning the filter is getting plugged up and we're probably having issues with our coolant. Some will actually have an inlet pressure and an outlet pressure. And they tell you what the inlet should be and the outlet should be. If it's greater than that on the outlet, it's time to change your filter or switch filters and then change it. Absolutely right. Guys, one of the four major issues that can happen with your coolant. Stay tuned. We have another three that you are going to absolutely enjoy. And with John, we can figure out how to remedy these issues. John, thank you again, my friend. All right. Thanks, Tony. <music>